The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. Hey folks, how you doing? Ken Shreve here. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. I know I've said this before that uh, the time that passes between Thursday when I do my last show and Tuesday, it seems like such a long time since I've been on the air. So uh, happy to be with you uh, today. We are uh, almost six uh, trading days into 2012. We'll take a look uh, at what is going on in the markets in just uh, a little bit. But uh, again, welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing. Uh, the number to use to get through, as always, is 877-927-6648. My show airs every Tuesday and Thursday on TFNN from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern. It's also available as a podcast on iTunes if you can't listen live and don't forget, you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. Just type in uh, TFNN.MOBI in your smartphone browser, and you can uh, listen to the uh, stream 24-7 that way as well. I'll be going through some charts on today's uh, show. If you want to look at those charts right along with me, just go to Tiger TV right on the homepage of TFNN.com, Channel 1 specifically, and you can look at those uh, charts live, and my show is archived on Tiger TV as well on channel 13 and uh, just recently you can watch Tiger TV on your smartphone very crisp clear graphics you can do that with your iPhone your Android device um, so you can get more details on the home page of tfnn.com folks uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow Wednesday January 11th 6:30 to 8 p.m. Eastern time a one and a half hour webinar by uh, my good friend Tom O'Brien his show follows my uh, Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern, the Tom O'Brien Show. Tom's doing a, a webinar uh, tomorrow, and you can get more information right on the homepage of tfnn.com, but it's about using the tick and trend index to identify market bottoms. That's Wednesday, January 11th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Eastern. More information right on the homepage of tfnn.com. All right, turning to the market today, let's uh, see where we're at. We've got uh, a little more than 50 minutes left to go in Tuesday's session. Right now, the Dow is up about 76 points, uh, 12,460. The NASDAQ uh, outperforming today up uh, a little over 28 points, a little better than 1% to 2704. And the S&P 500 sitting right at a swing point here, 1292. It's um, looks like it's off its highs a little bit, up close to 12 points, 9 tenths of a percent to 1292. Taking a look at a chart of the Dow, you can see the Dow is, uh, you know, looks pretty darn good technically here. Uh, it recently broke out over a swing point of 12,284 that was uh, back here in late uh, October, uh, but the Dow continues to trade uh, very well, holding nicely above that swing point. Let's uh, move over and take a look at the S&P 500, and we'll see that uh, this index is in the process of breaking out as well. Again, the, the key swing point for the S&P 500, you had 1267, so you already had a breakout, uh, which was basically coincided with a breakout over the 200-day moving average, a pretty significant resistance level. Uh, but right now, 1292 is in play, and the S&P, lo, lo and behold, is right at that swing point uh, right now. Uh, the good news is that volume on the New York Stock Exchange today is tracking quite a bit higher than Monday's uh, level. We've been talking um, until we're blue in the face about lack of uh, buying in the market, lack of volume in the market. Uh, it's still not huge today, but on the New York Stock Exchange, it is uh, tracking about 20-25% higher than Monday's uh, very light uh, level. Volume on Monday on the New York Stock Exchange was uh, below average at about 719 million shares. Uh, again, today tracking about 20, 25% higher. Uh, so that would bring us, uh, you know, we, we could see, I don't know, 825, 850 million uh, in that area, which is actually about average for the New York Stock Exchange. So we're still not seeing waves of new money coming in from the sidelines here. And uh, that does give me reason for pause about underlying uh, market health. I am, you know, sticking with this uptrend for now. I've been putting to work, putting money to work in my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio and uh, enjoying some nice gains in some individual growth stocks. But I'm still a bit uneasy on this market. I'm really not convinced that new money is coming in from the uh, sidelines uh, yet. I read uh, earlier today 
I think it was Kevin Martyr over at Market Watch that said, uh, you know, this week is the time when trading desks on Wall Street are really operating at full power. So uh, we should, over the next few days, get uh, an idea of where this market uh, wants to go. Hopefully, we'll see volume uh, start to pick up sooner rather than later. But it does seem like institutions are, are sort of in wait and see mode ahead of uh, fourth quarter earnings season. We had uh, Alcoa kick things off uh, Monday night after the close. Kind of middling results. They, their forecast was pretty good. There does seem to be. Uh, some skepticism on Wall Street um, about their outlook, um, but we will uh, we'll, we'll take a look at Alcoa in in just uh, a little bit. Okay, let's uh, move over and take a look at the Nasdaq Composite, and this index is. Um, you know, probably the the weakest out of the three. It did gap up today. The Nasdaq is up, uh, like I said, about one percent to twenty seven oh four thereabouts. But um, resistance levels uh, for the Nasdaq twenty six seventy four. Uh, it did successfully break out over the twenty six seventy four level, which again was right at its two hundred day moving average. So it is back above that. Um, uh, that line and now for the Nasdaq the next level of resistance is going to be 2753 which is again that late October uh, high so all the indexes at this point look um, look pretty good you know I can't really find anything major majorly wrong from a technical perspective you know everybody's waiting for volume to come into this market the question is when volume does come in are we going to see institutional selling or are we going to see institutional uh, buying that is the big uh, question right now I'm not sure that volume is going to come into the market this week, but certainly when earnings season really starts to kick into gear next week, the following week, uh, that is when we're going to start to see um, volume, and uh, hopefully it'll be institutional buying, but that frankly is a big, big question mark at, uh, at this uh, point. All right. Let's see, what do we have uh, going on here? We have the uh, European Central Bank is going to be meeting this Thursday, day after tomorrow. That's their monthly interest rate meeting. Uh, probably not going to be earth-shattering news coming out of there. Uh, over the past two months, the ECP, e ECB has lowered interest rates uh, in Europe. They uh, are not expected. They're going to probably hold tight this time around. Most are not expecting the ECB to lower interest rates uh, again. Uh, taking a look at the... U.S. dollar, which I, I do every day. I typically just use the UUP as a benchmark. Its chart pretty much mirrors the U.S. dollar index. This is the PowerShares Deutsche Bank U.S. dollar index bullish ETF. Uh, two days in a row down now. It was down uh, Monday, also down again uh, today, but still uh, its uptrend is intact. It's really not showing uh, major signs of technical weakness here. And again, a strengthening uh, dollar, a strong dollar is... Uh, usually problematic for the for the market, but you have to give the market credit because since January 3rd last week on Tuesday, which was the first trading day of 2012, and really over the first five six days of trading, the market has shown quite a bit of resilience amid a strengthening uh, dollar. So the market is acting well, uh, despite the fact that the U.S. dollar index has not broken down yet, and it's going to have to go down quite a bit lower for the uh, for the dollar to really break down uh, technically. Let's check another couple of uh, ETFs uh, today. I do write about ETFs over at uh, over at the street. Uh, I write for their uh, premium subscription product ETF uh, products or ETF profits, I should say. But let's take a look at uh, XLF. This is the Financial Select Sector Spider ETF. It is outperforming today, so financials uh, doing pretty well. It's up 27 cents. That's good for a 2% gain to 13.74. Uh, what's interesting about the XLF? is you can see it's 200 day moving average here at 1388 right now it's at 1374 so uh, I do talk a lot about these moving averages as potential resistance levels this could be a ceiling for the XLF or it may not be because you have a swing point all the way over here again back in a lot of these late October highs are in play here for the XLF you're looking at fourteen dollars and seventeen cents Bottom line, it's not out of the question that this XLF uh, could see a break a breakout in the near term. The other scenario is that it goes right, bumps up against its 200-day moving average, uh, finds a resistance, and then pulls back some. But top holdings in the uh, XLF are companies like Wells Fargo, 
We'll take a look at uh, Wells Fargo here. That's WFC on the New York Stock Exchange. You can see this uh, this stock has been in rally mode. A uh, fair amount of volume, too. I mean, volume has been expanding in some of these uh, financials. Not a big fan of the uh, money center banks here, even though they have been uh, working, uh, where you tend to see companies with uh, stronger fundamentals, stronger bottom line and top line growth, a lot of the smaller uh, regional banks, and I own one of them that's been doing uh, quite nicely in my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio. Uh, but, you know, that being said, the money centers have uh, have come back to life, so Wells Fargo is a top holding in the XLF. Uh, also, uh, JP Morgan, JPM, uh, that company has been in the news uh, lately because uh, yesterday in San Francisco, the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference kicked off, so a lot of news coming out of the, the biotech sector uh, yesterday, and uh, today, I own a, a highly profitable biotech uh, stock in my uh, model portfolio that is uh, also doing well. But uh, J.P. Morgan uh, also outperforming today up 2.3% to 36.12. Uh, you can see its 200-day uh, moving average at 37 uh, could be a ceiling as well. So uh, XLF uh, outperforming today. Uh, let's also take a look at the SMH. SMH. The uh, this is a market vectors uh, fund now, which is run by I believe uh, the Van Eck uh, family of ETFs. But the SMH is uh, up 21 cents today, seven tenths of a percent to 31.93. I mentioned the SMH because it's in another interesting technical setup here, just like the XLF. So this is reason to be optimistic about this market in the near term, if we can get breakouts for the XLF and the SMH, which holds a basket of semiconductor stocks, uh, top hold in the SMH are companies like Intel, Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM, and also Texas uh, Instruments. But the SMH uh, vying for a breakout here over 3274. And again, that's going to be its late October high. So bottom line with this market right now, swimming with the tide. We are in an uptrend. There are some shaky aspects about this uh, uptrend, mostly lack of volume. Uh, when you're moving higher in light volume, whether you're an index, an individual stock, an individual ETF, uh, it, is, it, it, it can set the stage for heavy volume uh, selling to eventually uh, come in. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it is something to pay attention to. Right now, we need conviction behind the buying in the major averages. And I'm not uh, seeing it yet. I haven't ruled it out, but uh, I think fourth quarter earnings season is really what holds the, the key here. If we see blowout numbers and you know, hopefully it's going to be enough to uh, fuel a new wave of institutional buying in this uh, in this market. But again, I would put those chances right at about 50-50 at uh, at this point. So going forward, we'll watch uh, we'll watch the market. The trend is upward for now. If we start to see volume come in to, to the downside, that's going to be a sign to um, start to ease off the accelerator. Maybe so, maybe take some uh, partial or full profits in some recent. Winner. So uh, that's uh, that's my uh, take right now in terms of the overall market. Pretty quiet week in terms of economic data and earnings reports, but my friends over at Investors Business Daily earlier today released their uh, first reading on consumer confidence for the month of January. When we come back, we'll take a look at a pretty bullish reading on consumer confidence from the IBD TIP Economic Optimism Index. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. We'll be right back. Homeowners, did you know a burglar could break into your home and get away in just five minutes? A locked door may not be enough to keep a thief out of your home. Think about what you can lose, and then think about this. Now you can get a free security system monitored by ADT, the leader in home security. Pick up your phone now and get free hardware, free medical and fire alert, and free activation. It's an $850 value. Just call Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, at 1-800-949-8207. You'll get 24-hour protection, and there's no cost for parts or activation. So call now about a free security system monitored by ADT. Call 1-800-949-8207. $99 installation charge. 36-month monitoring agreement at $35.99 a month. Call for terms and conditions to this offer and protect your home license numbers. Call now. 1-800-949-8207. That's 1-800-949-8207.
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective and maximize your returns. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. In 1929, Joe Kennedy had $4 million. By 1932, he grew it into $180 million. All this during the Great Depression. The good thing about economic difficult times is that the worst economy can produce the best rewards in the shortest period of time. In fact, during the last 130 years, 61% of that time has been spent in recession. How would you like the strategies that are bulletproof against the turmoil of our economy in these fast-changing times? For the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets used by millionaires and billionaires. These are bulletproof strategies that will absolutely astonish you. I'd love to introduce you to these concepts that will absolutely change your life. You'll learn the three ways to grow any business exponentially. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien and host of The Trader's Edge, both seen daily at TFNN.com. If you're even a little bit interested in accumulating wealth, providing a better life for you and your family, then go to TFNN.com, look under Breaking News, and click on the Get Steve Rhodes Special Report link, and I'll email you this free report, Pathways to Wealth. Would you like to discover the next great tech stock? David White, TFNN's technology guru, has just launched his new newsletter, The Technology Insider. In his newsletter, David will be looking for those shining stars that may turn into the next Apple, Microsoft, or Cisco. David combines his technology background as a software programmer with his market skills as a successful professional trader to give you this unique newsletter. We're on the verge of the next great tech run. With the Technology Insider, you'll be in front of the run-up and not lagging behind. David is developing a long-term investment portfolio. Therefore, we're only offering the Technology Insider as an annual subscription with a remarkable price of only $395. That's right. For a little over $1 a day, you'll receive the fundamental technology wisdom and technical trading skills of the Technology Insider, David White. What are you waiting for? Go to the front of TFNN.com, click on the link on the front page, sign up for your two-week free trial, and become a Technology Insider today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone. Ken Shree with you. Welcome to Breakout Investing on TFNN, segment number two on a... Tuesday, thanks very much for tuning in. I mentioned uh, earlier that... Um, I launched uh, Ultimate Growth Stocks, my uh, newsletter at TFNN, in late April earlier this year, and uh, currently have about six or seven names in my model portfolio right now that are are doing well amid uh, newfound market strength, and um, I publish uh, weekly, so I publish every Tuesday. Earlier today, my latest uh, weekly update went out, and I send out email buy and sell alerts in between uh, with buy alerts, uh, sell alerts, general market updates. Uh, things like that. So uh, at one point, it was just a two-week free trial to Ultimate Growth Stocks, but that has been extended to 30 days, one month free trial. And if you want to uh, avail yourself of a uh, one-month trial to Ultimate Growth Stocks, just go right on the homepage of TFNN.com. You can click on the Newsletters tab right along the top of the page, and then Investment Newsletters, and that's where you'll find Ultimate Growth Stocks. All right, before we get into this fresh reading on consumer uh, confidence from uh, my friends over at IBD earlier today, let's take a look at uh, crude oil. I usually uh, do that with the... Um, 
the uh, crude oil fund. I'm blanking out on the ticker symbol here. I believe it is, um, yeah, USO. All right, USO. That's the United States uh, Oil uh, Fund, which basically tracks the uh, price of West Texas Intermediate Light Sweet Crude Oil. Uh, oil today up 93 cents, close to 1% to 102.24 a barrel. And you can see the technical picture of the USO is also strong here. Oil, uh, to me, looks like it wants to go higher, which isn't uh, surprising. Uh, considering that the market's perception right now seems to be that things in 2012 may be a little better than what was uh, expected in the middle part of 2011, maybe the uh, the tail end of uh, 2011 as well. But uh, U.S. economic growth, I think there's a chance that could probably come in a little better than expected. Um, uh, and then the situation in Europe, you know, Europe may not be as bad as some were, were thinking in the second half of 2011. So the USO, United States Oil Fund today, up eight-tenths of a percent, 31 cents to 39.39 and holding holding above its 50-day uh, moving average here, and uh, it continues to show relative price strength. Um, some oil names uh, in the news today. Let's take a look at EOG Resources. I haven't been shy about saying that the Exploration and Production Group is uh, filled with a lot of uh, stocks with outstanding fundamentals, outstanding growth prospects, uh, institutional quality names, uh, EOG Resources. Trading near its session low today, but still up 3.1% to 105.35. EOG EOG is uh, trying to break out here over 106.20. Uh, That's going to be its intraday high set in early December. So you've got a nice base uh, building here. Shares of EOG did gap up today. I believe the stock was uh, was upgraded. Um, and again, it's up a little over 3% to 105.35, sitting just underneath a swing point of 106.20. Another name uh, in the group that is uh, pretty strong here, Concho Resources, CXO on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, Concho also trading near its session low after early strength. It hit an intraday high of 104.83. It's uh, now trading around 102.34, still up about 1.4% on the day. Uh, Concho Resources tr trying to break out here over 105.66. Uh, that would be its intraday high set in this area right here. And finally, uh, ticker PXD, that's going to be Pioneer Natural Resources. Uh, that stock uh, looking a little better here, trading in the middle half of its trading range today, maybe in the top half, uh, stock up close to 3% today to 97.68. Uh, Pioneer Natural Resources trying to get in position for a breakout over 9710. So uh, a lot of action in the E&P group, not only today, but in uh, recent weeks. A lot of strong technical setups. Um, I own a, a real strong performer in that group in, uh, in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. Good heavy volume breakout recently continues to trade pretty well. So uh, that l looks like an area of the market that could... Um, provide some leadership here, at least in the uh, near term. Taking a look at uh, the GLD, um, the Spider Gold Trust. Gold today gained $23.40. This is gold bullion now. Gained $23.40, 1.5% to finish at sixteen thirty-one fifty an ounce. The Spider Gold Trust is currently up about 1.5% to one fifty-eight. 80. It is now trading slightly above, it looks like, its 200-day moving average. Um, remains to be seen whether the GLD is going to be able to continue its uptrend. If it does close above its 200-day moving average today, which is 158.55, it's about 35 cents above the 200-day line now, uh, it would seem likely that the 50-day moving average at 163 would be the next, um, uh, next stopping point. So GLD has come back to life over the past, uh, oh, six or seven sessions. Gold up big today, up 23 bucks, 1.5% to $1,631.50 an ounce. Stick with me, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be at the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. 
Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now what type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley of Smith Barney believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower your volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angelo O'Brien, financial advisor and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 ounces per year at a cash cost of only $450 per ounce. The Hollister mine in Nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only $527 per ounce. Great Basin Gold is cash flow positive and trades on the Toronto and New York stock exchanges under the symbol GBG. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone. So while the recent rally it makes me a little uneasy just in terms of the lack of volume behind a lot of uh, price gains it doesn't mean that there aren't stocks out there working they are out there they're not widespread they're not all over the place you know when you when you go through growth screens it's probably you know it's still not easy to find good heavy volume moves with uh, with conviction but uh, let's take a look at some names that are working here how about B -E Aerospace, ticker BEAV. On the NASDAQ, uh, the stock is following through today very nicely. This is, uh, you know, compelling price action here. The stock is up 2.2% today to 41.75. BEAV uh, broke out yesterday over right around $40 a share. You had your swing point uh, right over in this area here. Trading close to uh, $42 now, so it is getting a little bit uh, extended in price. But the news yesterday was that BE Aerospace uh, bought 
uh, a company called UFC Aerospace for $400 million. Now, BE Aerospace makes uh, aircraft cabin interior products. Bottom line, what you have is a good heavy volume technical breakout. So it's exactly the type of stock that I uh, target for my ultimate growth stocks uh, model portfolio. I can't buy every single heavy volume breakout that uh, that goes out there, but BE uh, Aerospace, uh, pretty good fundamentals, good technical structure, uh, working on several up days in a row, but the bottom line is that it did break out over resistance uh, yesterday in strong volume, right over about $40 a share. So BE Aerospace uh, working nicely. Let's also take a look at um, Equinix, E-Q-I-X. This is a name that I have mentioned on the show uh, before. It's a networking company. Stock is uh, also trading uh, very well here. Good follow-through in heavy volumes. This is a stock that is under accumulation. It is up another two dollars and seventy eight cents today two point six percent to one ten fifty three uh, Equinix, Equinix recently broke out over one oh four fifty eight 104.58, so the swing point would be right in this area here. Good example of a heavy volume uh, breakout. Next time Equinix reports earnings, uh, good fundamental, good growth story here. Earnings are expected to be up 52% from a year ago to 44 cents a share sales up 24 percent year over year to 429.6 million so equinix another heavy volume mover in the market that is acting quite well and today star of the day let's take a look at sxci sxc health solutions huge top line growth for this company in recent quarters they have made a series of acquisitions going back to 2008 uh, 2008 which has really resulted in strong top line growth for the company. SXC Health Solutions is a provider of pharmacy benefit management services. So it's a PBM company and it also provides healthcare information technology systems. Uh, this is uh, another good heavy volume breakout today. Okay, uh, Volume strong in SXC Health Solutions. Stocks up 6% to 62.02. Seems to be getting stronger as the session uh, wears on. But um, the swing point here was sixty dollars a share so if you take two dollars and you divide it by sixty stock is only about three percent above that swing point so a key rule that i learned uh... during my ten plus year at investors business daily is when you buy a heavy volume breakout you want to be careful not to chase a stock and chasing a stock means buying it when it's more than four to five percent past a swing point so right now sxc is only about three percent past uh, its swing point of 60, uh, acting very well in, in heavy volume. So technically, it's not, not too late uh, to maybe nibble at uh, shares here. The train has, has not left the station. But fundamentals are uh, outstanding at this company. Uh, when they report earnings, uh, profit growth of 71% is expected uh, to 48 cents a share. Sales up 139%, unbelievable, to $1.3 uh, billion. A lot of acquisitions for this company recently, so SXCI acting very well today. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN, folks. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. In 1929, Joe Kennedy had $4 million. By 1932, he grew it into $180 million. All this during the Great Depression. The good thing about economic difficult times is that the worst economy can produce the best rewards in the shortest period of time. In fact, during the last 130 years, 61% of that time has been spent in recession. 
How would you like the strategies that are bulletproof against the turmoil of our economy in these fast-changing times? For the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets used by millionaires and billionaires. These are bulletproof strategies that will absolutely astonish you. I'd love to introduce you to these concepts that will absolutely change your life. You'll learn the three ways to grow any business exponentially. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien and host of The Trader's Edge, both seen daily at TFNN.com. If you're even a little bit interested in accumulating wealth, providing a better life for you and your family, then go to TFNN.com, look under Breaking News, and click on the Get Steve Rhodes Special Report link, and I'll email you this free report, Pathways to Wealth. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. I should get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighted that was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Uh, right now, volume in the market, uh, pretty decent on the New York Stock Exchange. Right now, tracking about 20 to 25% higher than, uh, than Monday. NASDAQ volume, not that impressive, uh, tracking pretty close to uh, Monday's level, which was um, about average at 1.77 billion shares. So it looks like we'll come in pretty close to that 1.7, 1.8 billion share level on the NASDAQ, which is about average. Uh, again, volume on the New York Stock Exchange tracking uh, right now about 20 to 25 percent higher than Monday. Uh, so that could, that could bring us... Uh, I'll call it, I don't know, 850 million shares on the New York Stock Exchange, so uh, pretty decent. Uh, let's uh, check on the markets here with uh, a little more than 15 minutes left to go in Tuesday's session. Uh, the Dow is uh, off its highs. Um, you know, it would be better to see it up, up near its highs, but uh, still not too bad, up 65 points, call it half a percent to 12,457. NASDAQ also off its highs a bit. Um, up about uh, 24 points, nine tenths of a percent to 2,700, and the S&P 500 up uh, just over 10 points, eight tenths of a percent to 1,291. So, talking about some recent heavy volume breakouts in the market from the likes of BE Aerospace, that's ticker BEAV on the Nasdaq, Equinix EQIX on the Nasdaq, and also SXC Health Solutions, SXCI. Uh, so good moves in in these stocks uh, over the past couple of days. Let's also take a look at CF uh, Industries. Uh, fundamentals are uh, pretty good here. CF Industries makes nitrogen and phosphate uh, fertilizers. This stock has really been in rally mode lately. It's up another 3.8% today to uh, 165.94. But for my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio, I tend to buy base breakouts, okay? I buy stocks that, you know, strong price performers in their industry group that, you know, go up in price, then they consolidate, they base, uh, they consolidate gains, and then they prep for another upward upward move, another upside uh, breakout. And what CF Industries is doing, even though it has rallied nicely off its recent low of 128, that was back in mid-December, now the stock has, has moved from 128 to 164. Big price move. I don't buy stocks off of bottoms like this. Uh, again, I buy base breakouts. Overall, I don't like CF Industries' technical picture here. Uh, clearly, people have made money in this stock that, that bought down at, uh, at the low of one, 128. It is trading back above resistance levels, and it is now going to maybe try to make a run at its recent high of 176.97. But this is a stock that, frankly, is just going to be off my uh, radar because it doesn't fit the mold of what I want to see 
in a stock. Simple as that. So uh, even though its price performance has been solid lately, it has uh, some missing ingredients. Uh, basically, it is not breaking out from a base at at this point. Uh, let's take a look at another interesting name here, Precision Cast Parts. Uh, actually, in the same industry group as BE Aerospace that we just went over, Precision Cast Parts having a nice day today, up 2.8 percent. It's another high price stock here, trading uh, around 175.37. But uh, Precision Cast Parts makes uh, forgings, investment castings, and fasteners for aerospace, power generation, industrial markets. Uh, good fundamentals here. And, um, you know, stock is uh, stock looking pretty good. It had a big reversal back in late October, which I don't like, but it is showing relative price strength and uh, can't rule out an eventual breakout for Precision Cast Parts uh, either. All right. Uh, Want to go to Chicago. Going to take a call from Steve in Chicago who wants to talk about Lulu Lemon. How you doing, Steve? Good, Ken. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Good. So I've owned uh, Lulu Lemon for the past year. Okay. And I held on to it through uh, through the downdraft, and then um, you know it recently was upgraded by Goldman, and it's pushed up. And um, I, so you know, my question is: Is this worth hanging on to, or do you, you think this is just going to continue consolidating here? Well, you know, I mean, this is a, it's an interesting call. I have not been real keen on Lulu uh, lately. Now, this Goldman upgrade, I think it was actually a pretty well-timed upgrade. Wasn't it about a week ago or right. maybe a – yeah. So what you had with Lulu uh, was, you know, very strong guidance for, for 2012. And this is a, a stock where the short – position had increased uh, from November 15th to December 15th. The short position went from 13.7 million shares up to about 15.2 uh, million shares. So a uh, big increase in short interest uh, between November 15th and December 15th. The stock hit a high of 62.25 today. It's now trading near its uh, its intraday low at around 59.99, $60 a share. Still up big for the day, big gap up. Um, you know, I think the news. This is kind of a tough call, Steve. I mean, are you are you still are you up on the position? Are you down? Are you closer to break even? Where where are you at? No, I'm up significantly on the position. I bought it uh, uh, a, year bought a year ago, ago. in January. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have a nice gain. I you know the I think long term the fundamentals are 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 pretty solid. Um, clearly, they have some execution issues they got to work through. But I yeah. just you know I look at it. and I'm like, yeah, you know, it seems to be getting to the top of the range, and I'm wondering if it's going to be dead money. Well, I, I think if you've got a big uh, cushion in it, um, there's certainly nothing wrong with maybe taking uh, half of a position off at this point and selling on some partial strength. Uh, so that would be that would be my first uh, inclination. Maybe sell half of what you have, or maybe just trim uh, a little bit. Uh, I think the news from the company today is a potential uh, game changer. I think that uh, I'm 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 pretty optimistic for the stock market in 2012, uh, Steve. I think it could be a good year for stocks, and I think Lululemon with the news that came out uh, earlier today um, you know the company had inventory issues uh, they seem to have uh, have worked uh, have worked through that which resulted in some uh, some serious raise guidance today mm -hmm. um, so you know being optimistic being a bull for for 2012 I think the S&P 500 could be up 15 percent this year I think uh, Lululemon in the retail space um, you know could uh, could continue to execute uh, quite quite nicely very good okay Thank yeah thanks so much Okay, Steve, thanks. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, Lulu is interesting. I mean, I, I listen, I, I can go from bearish uh, to, to bullish on a stock. Uh, when a stock gaps up in huge volume, I mean, there is some short covering going on in, in Lululemon uh, today, no question about it. It's not, not clear to me that there are new uh, institutional buyers in this stock today. But the news uh, from the company earlier today was, uh, was very bullish. Let's call a spade a spade. They um, have worked through some of their issues, and um, looks like it's going to be able to return to bottom line and, and top line growth in uh, in spades in 2012 so um uh we'll see what the future has in store for lulu lemon all right folks uh, stick with me uh, last segment coming up you're listening to breakout investing on tfnn we'll be right back hi folks this is tom o'brien 
If you want to get great trade setups in equity as well as the option market, come over to TFNN.com and test drive my daily newsletter, Market Insights, for two weeks absolutely free. Each trade setup comes with a profit projection as well as stock placement. Included in Market Insights is a Twitter alert service. This allows you to take advantage of intraday setups. Volatility is back in the markets. What does that mean to you? To me, it spells short-term opportunity each and every day. The days of trending up on light of volume are gone. We have come off the highs with volume across the globe. Don't get caught in a complacency trap. Many of the indices have given back two months of trading in one week. We have a trader's market. You can take advantage of this trader's market by test driving my daily newsletter, Market Insights, free for two weeks. Market Insights will give you the edge you're looking for in the markets. Go to TFNN.com under Newsletter. Hit the Market Insight tab for your two-week free test drive right here, right now. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, folks. Steve Rhodes here. Tom O'Brien and I need your help. Together, let's change the cash for gold industry once and for all. Now is the time to unleash the game changer, and that's you, folks. We've all seen the power of viral marketing. It's overthrown dictators, and now it's time to rid the thieves in this cash for gold industry. Together, we can change this industry in a heartbeat. You know about our industry-leading payouts, our free tools, our video valuation, and the education that we provide to help folks value their jewelry. Tom and I are experts and the industry's most trusted team. Please join us now by spreading the word to your entire email list. We'll pay you 5% of the total payout, which on average would be $50 per transaction. 100 transactions is five grand in your pocket. We'd rather put our marketing dollars in your pocket and more money in your referrals pocket. Go to TigerMetalExchange.com and click on the Become a Partner button to join our team. Let's start a revolution, folks. We can't do it without you. TigerMetalExchange.com, the only click you need to make. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you, no matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks, as we head into the close here. About five minutes left to go in uh, Tuesday's session and another decent session taking shape for the Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ. Wanted to take a look at uh, shares of Google. Boy, has this stock come under quite a bit of pressure in recent days. 
You know, you had a breakout over 618 thereabouts, and then kind of this upward move in, in mostly light volume. Never really saw a lot of conviction behind the buying in Google, but the stock is pretty much flat today, trading around 622.48. It pretty much has come all the way back to its uh, initial swing point, uh, trying to firm up here at its 50-day moving average, but the stock really got hammered yesterday. Yesterday was unequivocal institutional selling in Google. Uh, volume was... Um, Absolutely enormous uh, at, uh, what was the volume, 5.8 million shares. It normally trades about 2.8 million, so uh, 3 million shares uh, above average for Google yesterday. And the, the news was that Motorola Mobility, which uh, Google is in the process of acquiring for about $12.5 billion. Some people thought that Google might have overpaid for Motorola Mobility, and the company came out yesterday and warned on, uh, on earnings. So that uh, fueled selling and uh, Google. So this one is uh, very iffy, and it's really a good example. For as many growth stocks as I'm seeing acting well in this market, I'm seeing just as many, if not more, that are not acting that great. And that's what gives me some reason for, for pause here. So you've got uh, Google under some pressure, uh, Intuitive Surgical, another recent low volume breakout that uh, continues to face uh, selling pressure, good qu high quality name here in the NASDAQ 100. We'll see if it's going to be able to hold its 50-day moving average at 4.39. Shares of ISRG down a dollar 50 today. Not too bad. Three tenths of a percent to 450. So uh, it looks like the 50-day line is in play here at 4.39. We'll see if Intuitive Surgical can firm up there in heavy volume. And lest we forget about uh, Apple, which has been, you know trying meagerly to break out over its recent high here of 426. Not a good day for the stock uh, yesterday. You can see that volume uh, picked up quite a bit in Apple yesterday. It reversed, finished near its session low. The stock is up three-tenths of a percent today to 423.05. Uh, you know, I don't think there's any doubt, as I've said in recent shows, we're going to see very strong bottom line and top line growth for Apple. Question is, you see a big move for the stock in recent weeks, but there has been absolutely zero volume behind this uh, price move. So yet another example of no conviction behind the buying. When you have no conviction behind the buying, it generally makes for a weak foundation. So I think Apple, if it is going to successfully break out over 426, which, which was its high back in October, uh, it's going to need a good volume push uh, to do that. Maybe its fourth quarter earnings report will be enough to do it, but um, Apple uh, looking... Um, you know, it's not weak, but yesterday there was bearish price action in the stock yesterday for sure. All right, let's take a look at uh, Panera Bread as well, a stock that I thought had uh, potential to move higher at one point. Uh, now, uh, uh, now I'm not so sure. Take a look at uh, Panera. I have problems entering the symbol here. P N R A. There it is on the Nasdaq. My big concern about Panera right now is this uh, reversal, big reversal in heavy volume. That was a day of institutional selling in the stock on January 3rd. Okay, so we had that big, huge rally in the market to kick off 2012 on January 3rd, and Panera got hit really hard. It's still holding above its 50-day moving average, but the bottom line is I'm seeing more signs of institutional selling in this stock than I am institutional buying. So Panera, I'm a little lukewarm on here as well. All right, folks, uh, that's going to do it for this edition of Breakout Investing. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show on TFNN from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. Coming up uh, tomorrow, We've got the Fed Beige Book, and we also have earnings from home builder Lennar. So we'll see if the home builder momentum can continue tomorrow when Lennar reports earnings. Have a great afternoon, folks. I'll uh, talk to you again on Thursday.